Hello friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time and I'm here for another this and that video and for those of you who are new this is basically a somewhat weekly vlog just showing some of the different things I have going on around here and to help direct you to old videos that I already have out on how to do some of this stuff or videos I will be having coming out soon so be watching for those and let's get started on what I have here so we're kind of you know finishing up the gardening season and I've been getting my uh tomatillos coming in a lot later than usual but I think there's two reasons for that and one is because our garden just in general had a really late start this past year but also because all of the tomatillos I'm growing were except for a few of the purple ones uh, all the green ones that I'm growing were all ones that had self seeded from the previous year and I do find with tomatillos just like with tomatoes and certain other things I do better by starting them in the greenhouse to give them a head start and then I can usually get the tomatillos picked by the end of September and and be done with them by then rather than still working on them. Now today is actually September I think 22nd and I it will be middle October by the time you're seeing this so maybe by then my tomatillos will be done but I already have started I got one batch of salsa made so far I hadn't really planned on doing any more but I think I will just for the sake because I still have lots of salsas from the previous two three four years maybe that we haven't been going through it as fast as we used to but it is still nice having some you know especially in this size having some salsa on hand to give as gifts or for a trade as things come up such as the friend that recently gifted us with some home canned elk meat which was just wonderful so we got two of these jars and in exchange for that we gave them two jars of my salsa verde and so that was nice to have that on hand to be able to do that and then i was able to take uh, for dinner last night i took one of the jars of the home canned elk meat and of course this was locally caught and I may I use the beet greens that I didn't think to mention when I was talking about the beets in my last video about um, I will grow these again I took those beet greens and chopped them up and took a, one of my Marconi peppers and threw that in there and what else zucchini of course and then some potatoes from the garden so all the vegetables came from the garden and uh, made a really nice and just baked it just threw it in a pan and baked it and it made a pretty decent dinner very very good tasting and this is why I like canned meat now we do have a lot of our own home canned meat and it is definitely one of those things that you know if you're not a vegan is a really good idea to have this on hand whether it be in the form of this or canned chicken or even canned hamburger that you or fish for that matter because you can just go open the jar at any time and throw together a real quick meal when time is tight like it's really been super tight for us lately because I've had a lot of custom orders Pat's had a lot of different projects going on and things to deal with and so this has just made our life easier being able to do that so i've been really grateful for this and um even though we already have some canned lots of canned beef that goes clear back to 2013 um this was my first time trying elk meat canned like this and boy is it good now another thing speaking of uh canned stuff this is not canned this is dehydrated but these are uh, this top layer here is the tomatoes from this year so i managed to fill i think I don't know was it seven or eight quart size jars with my own home dried tomatoes from this year I just I process them I pour them onto the the trays that are made for like fruit roll-ups and then crumble them up and then into flakes and store them like this now I want you to look closely and you can see that this layer here is darker than this layer because after I filled up all my quart jars as many as I wanted I still had just a little bit of tomato left over and I'm not going to be dehydrating anymore so I just went ahead and put it in this uh, previously open jar of tomatoes that I think is probably from maybe 2017 or 2016 and so you can see the difference in the color that's not because these are fresher that's because in this year here I was only doing red tomatoes where in this one I've got a mix of the red and the black tomato so you can see it ended up with a far deeper color than the previous ones I was dehydrating up 
And so I have a whole video just on the uh, drying the tomatoes and uh, how I use them. I think I talk about that in there. But anyway, it's really good for thickening up sauces or to make a sauce out of directly or even making ketchup out of just like that. And um, I'll talk about that probably more again in another video down the road. But I, it's just one way I like to preserve my tomatoes. I do can tomatoes as well, but this year I didn't can any. I just went right to dehydrating because it takes up a lot less room. And I do still have a lot of uses for it just as it is. And then I do want to go back to, now I did a video about the um, about making the Brazil nut milk. And I just decided to go ahead and start another batch because I'm very, very happy with the Brazil nut milk. And it's one of my very favorite milks. But in that video, I think it was, I was talking about the pumpkin seed and making a milk out of that, which I did do. And I'll show you a picture right here. And you can see in the background of this picture, the pulp. The milk and the pulp both ended up with a bit of a green uh, color to it, which is to be expected because the pumpkin seeds are green on the outside. Um, my thoughts on this was I wasn't really thrilled with the flavor of either. It was okay. The milk I used, I did use in making some gravy and that's okay it's it's more of a savory type flavor and the pulp i didn't care for at all i actually went ahead and fed it to the chickens it wasn't a waste because well the chickens loved it but i won't be making a milk out of these but it was definitely worth a try because now i know and some of you may like to try it at least you could you know, it might be something, especially if you're vegan and you're looking for more dairy-free things, and especially if you're growing a lot of pumpkin and you decide to save the seeds, take those seeds and, and uh, turn them into a, a milk that you can use for savory dishes, such as making a, a gravy for like biscuits and gravy or meatballs and gravy or something like that. Of course, if you're vegan, you won't be having meatballs, but maybe you're dairy-free and you could have meat, but not the dairy. So just something to think about. But when it comes to a milk, you know, the Brazil nut and then the pecan cashew, you know, if you're looking, especially for something that's more sweet, the Brazil nut is going to definitely be my favorite. This is the one that I, I would just drink this straight. And I, I'm not a big milk drinker of any kind, but I liked the flavor of it, so, of it so much as is that I could just drink this. And I did. I didn't actually do anything else with it but drink it. And then I used the pulp, you know, the Brazil nut pulp to make that bread. So I've got videos on both of those. I'll link to them down below because I know I won't have enough room for all my cards up here. I'll put up here what I can, but uh, down below in the description box will be the best place to find the videos of all the different things. Because I also have a video on how you can make your own, sal or how I make my salsa verde. Everybody has their own style and way of doing it. This is just the way I do it, and um, we like it that way. Okay, so the big thing I wanted to talk about, this is the this is the newest thing to us, as far as taking our own apples. I did get that apple press, and I'm hoping to shoot a video maybe tomorrow or in a few days about how I make the apple cider, or the apple juice, or the apple wine. In this case, I'm taking the first batch that we uh, got from our apples, and I'm turning it into an apple wine. So this just got started yesterday. And so my apple press came in and I'm really happy with it. it. It is a lot of work. It took a whole laundry basket full of apples to get this much juice out. But I tell you, the juice was amazing. It's just, you know, we did drink a little bit of it and boy, best tasting apple juice I've ever had. In fact, nothing I've ever had from the store or anywhere else compares to apple juice from your own homegrown apples that you've then uh, pressed yourself. And anyway, so be watching for that video to come out. Now, as far as winemaking, this isn't new. I've been doing wine off and on for many years. You know, I started off by making mead, which is just honey wine. It's just the main difference is you're using honey and not sugar or fruit, but I always added fruit for flavor. But anyway, I use my, when I ever I make my wine, I use my own homemade fermentation starter. This is one of the best uses for the homemade fermentation starter. And this was the blueberry currant one. And you can see, if you saw a video I did, one of my this and that videos I showed this, I had the red and the blue currants. Well, the, the currants have all lost their red color, but the blue is still holding, the blueberries are still holding on to their 
color a little bit but anyway that's what i used to get this started now i have a whole series on making your own homemade wine that you can check out again i'll link to that series down below and that's with using the fermentation starter so i don't have to go buy a wine yeast i don't have to use bread yeast i just use a starter made from my own homegrown fruits and a little bit of sugar and my own filtered rainwater that's all that is and so this um in about a month i'll have a nice uh, bottle of apple wine that i'll then rack and it should be really good i'm anxious to see how that's going to turn out now the next jug that i do is just going to be for the juice itself just so that we could use it right away and i'm uh, i did take the pulp from most of the pulp not all of it because there was a lot and started eight jars of vinegar from the pulp left over from this and then the rest I fed to the chickens and used for compost but this time the bat next batch I'm going to do I'm actually going to peel and core the apples first so that after I'm done mashing them I can use Sharon Brown's idea and take that pulp and then just turn it into applesauce even though I have a whole bunch of applesauce already canned up even some that I did this year so far I'll just can up even more because it's a good thing to have on hand because there's lots of uses for applesauce and another great item to gift to people so or to use as trade so there's nothing wrong with having a bunch of extra on hand and then let's see i talked about the milk over here i've got all the ingredients out because i need to get a uh, mix up another batch of season salt i thought i'd just done this but i can't find my jar of season salt so either I did mix it up and I put it in a weird spot or I never mixed it up. I thought I had and uh, it's not there. So I need to get some made and if I find the other jar, fine. I'll have two jars and I'll be good for a while. So anyway, I do have a video and a recipe on how I make my own seasoned salt. And here's the great thing about making your own seasoned salt is that you can mix up your ratios however you want you can add more things to it like turmeric or basil or whatever sounds good to you or even some cayenne pepper and just do your own ratios but you can take my recipe and just base it off that and do it however you want like i know that t has taken my recipe and increased the amount of paprika that she uses in that which the funny thing was is the original recipe i took actually that i got this from uh, initially had more paprika and then less of the other ingredients and all I did I didn't increase the I didn't decrease the amount of paprika I simply increased the amount of the onion and the garlic and the and the black pepper and that's the great thing about things like the anything like this is that you can take such recipes and then tailor it to suit you rather than going to the store and buying a seasoned salt that's just so so and then usually has msg and other junk in it that you really don't want you can make it totally natural out of whatever you want and make it take and i have another salt uh seasoned salt recipe that i use specifically for popcorn and it's got more of a mexican type flavor because it's got cumin and chili powder in it and that one's really good especially for using on popcorn Whew, it's really tasty so yeah you can do anything you want with those but anyway I gotta get that done and then back here you can see I gotta get more skin cream made because I'm about sold out of one of my scents and I'm out of my own not totally out but I need to I need to make myself some more to fill up my own little jar of skin cream and my favorite blend for myself is the frankincense grapefruit and ylang ylang so I'll be making that for myself and then I need to make more of the rose geranium vanilla one to put up on the store because uh, at the time that I'm shooting this video I only have one left and so both of them tend to sell really well so if you're interested in the skin cream and how to make it yourself I do have a video on that so you can make it yourself or if you're interested in trying it to see what you think I do sell this on my Etsy store my Etsy store is linked in the usually in every end card you'll see a little red nasturtium flower that's actually the link to my to our Etsy store and then I also put it in the link in the description box down below so if you're ever looking for any links that we mentioned whether it be the video links our social media links or anything like that or our Amazon links don't forget to click on the little thing that says show more because you're only going to see a couple of things until you click on that. Then you'll the whole thing will open up and you'll see all the different links to the videos or any other things that we want to put in there. So just in case you don't know that because sometimes I get people who say I can't find the link. Well I think it's probably 
because you're missing the fact that you got to click on the show more. I remember I used to do that too when people would say that and I'd look down there and I didn't see what they were talking about. Got to click on show more to see all of it. So we do have our contact information down there too. So if you ever want to send us an email or find us on Facebook, that's the place to look to find those links. And then another thing I got to do this week is I emptied out one of my jars of my homemade laundry powder. So I need to get going on this, even though I always keep at least two full jars at a time. That way, if it takes me a few days to get around to making some more, which I'm probably not going to get to this today because I'm really busy, but I'm going to try. But either way, I can leave this jar out. But anyway, I have that backup jar that I can use when I get around to this. So if you're interested in my recipe, it's very, very simple. And I'll link to that as well in the description box. And if I can, maybe up in here. So I'm pretty much giving up on the iCards. I'll still use them, but it's just, I just don't, they don't typically give me enough. You're only allowed to put five up there. And sometimes I'm talking about seven or eight or even nine different videos. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed this video, my this and that for the week, and be watching for more, and let me know what you think. Some people, they find these videos to be their very favorites. They're fun, and uh, I think it also helps people that, even though they've been following me for a long time, just to remind them, oh yeah, she's got this recipe or that, and I need to go try that. I haven't done it yet, or whatever. <laughs> All right, well, thanks for watching. Take care, and God bless.